it was strictly a laboratory phenomenon. What happened is uh, people incubated eggs for, uh, until they hatched in incubators in a lab, and then they exposed the young ducklings or chicks to them walking around the lab, and the chicks and ducklings would follow them around and develop a preference for them as their filial uh, figure. And I, during my uh, doctoral dissertation examination, uh, I was uh, asked this question. I had studied the critical period for imprinting. That was what I had done my major work on. And one of the professors was cogent enough to say, I noticed that even at the height of the critical period, not all of the ducklings followed the model. Mm -hmm. He said, that wouldn't happen in nature, would it? And I said, no, I, I guess that wouldn't happen in nature. I said, but we don't know what would happen in nature because even though Conrad Lawrence is one of the discoverers of imprinting, he didn't make naturalistic observations. He observed chicks and ducklings and goslings that were hatched in incubators in the lab. Mm -hmm. And that, after I got the job at Dorothy Dix Hospital, and married Nora Gottlieb, I went out in the field to see what was actually going on. And we went out with, uh, with the tape recorders as well as, as, uh, as cameras. And what we discovered is that the uh, uh, ducklings started to peep very weakly, but they started to peep before they ever hatched. And the hen, in the reciprocal way, in the transactional way, the hen answered them. And so they were already doing a vocal uh, auditory interchange before hatching. Mm -hmm. And thereby, I thought, because I, the imprinting idea was, well, not only develop a preference for the visual side of the human object that you first find, but that if, you, if the human object vocalized, you would also develop a preference for its vocalization, mm -hmm. its speech or whatever. So it seemed to me that, that what was happening is that the animals becoming auditorily imprinted to the mother during this dialogue that was happening embryonically. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I did was uh, we got the recordings. It turned out they were wood duck recordings. The wood ducks are whole nesters which nest in trees, cavities in trees. Uh, and the uh, mallards which nest on the ground. And we collected eggs from these two species and incubated them in the lab. Uh, Wood ducks and wood duck incubators and mallard and mallard incubators, and then we tested them with the recordings of the mallard and the wood duck call in in the lab. We gave them what we called a simultaneous auditory choice mm -hmm. test. So we placed them in a situation where there were two speakers, and one speaker broadcast the mallard maternal call, and the other speaker broadcast our recording of the of the wood duck material. And lo and behold, all of the wood ducks went to the wood duck maternal call and all the mallards went to the mallard maternal call. And these of course are ducklings that have never heard these calls before. Exactly. Okay. So I thought that was really something else. You know. Uh, it wasn't like nature. If if I had done this, as I had you know observed in nature, played them the mallet call beforehand, or played them the wood duck call beforehand, you know while they were in the incubator, then fine, you'd expect to get auditory imprinting. Right. 